welcome to what I'm going to call my Victoria sandwich video. I hope you enjoy and let's crack on with making the sandwich cake. So ingredient wise you need 200 grams of caster sugar, so that's in there at the moment, I've got to measure that out, 200 grams of softened butter, I'm using Asda's today, 4 eggs, so I've got my box of eggs, um, 1 tablespoon, 1 teaspoon sorry, of baking powder, 200 grams of self-raising flour and it does say 2 tablespoons of milk but I'm going to leave that in the fridge until we need it just because I need to measure everything out first. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure everything and then I'll be back. Okay, so what I normally do to save washing up is I actually measure the butter into whatever mixing bowl we're using. So I'm actually using my electric mixer today. So I've put the butter in there ready. And for this particular recipe, it says, the only thing I haven't done yet is eggs, but it says to bung it all in one bowl. Okay, so it says to beat 200 grams of caster sugar, 200 grams of butter, four eggs, the flour and the baking powder until you've got a smooth soft batter. What, so what I'm going to do, the butter's in here, so I've got my caster sugar that I'm going to bung in, like so. Any washing up I'm just going to throw in the sink behind. So that's the caster sugar. I've got four eggs that I need to beat. in because it says four beaten eggs. Okay, throw that in, that's in. Um, flour, I am just going to quickly sieve because it probably should be sieved before it goes in. So I'm going to kind of edge it out of the bowl into the sieve and then we'll nudge it in. Just get the last of that in. Sweet. Um, what was it? A tea, two, two, a teaspoon of baking powder and two tablespoons of milk. So I have some trusty spoons that I always use. So I need a teaspoon of baking powder, which we can do now. A teaspoon of that. And what does it say? Two tablespoons of milk. Just going to grab the milk. And then we'll uh, let it do its thing. So I need two of these. That's one. Whoa, that's two. And I'm going to do a teeny tiny drip mop. Just because you always lose a little bit in the spoon. Okay. And then I'm just going to let that mix until it's smooth and soft. Okay, what I'm going to quickly do is just check that the sides don't need scraping because that's something that happens quite a bit. So you get to what you think is the end and then you realise you actually need to quickly scrape the sides down. So I'm just going to do that. So we'll give it another quick mix and then we should be ready for separating into two different dishes. So let's get that back on for just a moment. Okay. Now 
on to the next bit. Okay, so this is the bit that gets a bit complicated. Not in a practical way, just because I always never manage to quite even it out. So, what I've got to now do is split this between my two tins. So, I'm just going to check that it's... It looks alright. Maybe a couple of bits of butter that needed a little bit more mixing in. But I'm sure it'll be fine. So, what we're going to do is... I'm going to do my usual technique, which is kind of splodge it in. So I try and do two splodges to start with and then I will normally try and add more in. So let's put another splodge and a bit in that one because the good thing is it will go to the edge of the tin. So the splodge and a bit in that one a bit of a splodge and a bit in that one. Because what I like about it is it will actually spread to the edges of the tin so I don't have to make it which is always a bit of a bonus. So that's probably about right in that one. Let's get this one the same. notice that that bit of greaseproof paper is sticking inwards. It's not going to be fun. There we go. It's probably a bit better. Yeah, I think that's pretty even. I don't think we're going to get much more even than that. Just trying to get all the remnants from the inside of the tub because you don't want to waste any. It's definitely a no-no. Can't waste this cake mix and the reason I do it on the top of the cooker is because the top of the cooker is actually the easiest thing to clean. So if you do make a bit of a mess then you can just clean it up. So I think that's pretty good at the edges of that. I do think there's one that's maybe got slightly more in, but it's as good as it's going to get. And the other thing I do like to do is grab an extra spatula and then actually push some of the mixture off your spatula that you were using because you can always get that bit extra off the spatula you were using to split between both. Because, like I say, why waste a good, decent amount of mixture? get every possible scrap and then I'm just going to quickly wash my hands but those will be going in the oven. My oven was preheated, I'm just grabbing the recipe to tell you how long they go in for. Um, the oven is at 170 fan because I have a fan oven so it says to leave them for about 20 minutes in the oven so I will do that and what I would normally do is whilst they're in the oven I would actually wash up so I'm going to try and crack on with some of that, but these are going to go in the oven for about 20 minutes and we'll see how they are and then they'll go on to a cooling rack as soon as they've finished their 20 minutes. So we're going to pop them in. See you in 20 minutes. Apologies if you can hear the washing machine, but I am quickly going to check the cakes because the timer's has just gone off on my computer. And I need to see if they're done. So. Okay, so I have actually just quickly tested them and they seem fine, so I'm going to assume that they are done. Um, I am going to leave them in the tins because what it does suggest is to leave them in the tins for maybe 10 minutes just to cool down and then what I'll do is I'll take them out of the tins and transfer them onto my cooling racks which are behind. So I'm going to give them about 10 minutes and then I'll be turning them out. Okay so for the icing um, I actually have in this weird looking olive tub um, I actually have some chocolate icing left from my previous chocolate cake 
So to make this icing, I used icing sugar, butter and a load of cocoa powder and a bit of dairy milk chocolate. If I can, I'll try and grab a recipe out and I'll try and sort of explain what I actually did to make the chocolate icing. In fact, I may have the recipe behind me. Hold on. I do. So for the buttercream for the icing for my previous chocolate cake, which is basically what this is, um, I used 100 grams of milk chocolate, 200 grams of soft butter, 400 grams of icing sugar, five tablespoons of cocoa powder and two tablespoons of milk. And what you basically do is you melt the chocolate that you use. So I melted my 100 grams of dairy milk in a heat proof bowl in the microwave and obviously stir it because otherwise you burn it. Um, then you mix the butter and the icing sugar together in the electric beater but you can start off with a fork if you need to. Put in the cocoa powder, um, let the chocolate cool down for like a couple of minutes before you tip it in and then you put a bit of milk in and you just mix it and it'll basically end up like that. So we're actually going to put this in the middle which isn't a classic sponge filling but I thought I might as well use it being as it's you know it's in the fridge um, and I might as well try and at least get it used. So we're going to lather as much of this in the middle as we can. I basically want to use all of it if I can. So I'm actually using a palette knife. The last few times I've just used a normal um, spatula but I thought for this occasion we'll try it with a palette knife because I feel like it might be a bit easier with a palette knife. So I, like I say this is going to be a classic sponge but the middle is going to be um, chocolate instead of your classic normal buttercream and jam. So apologies for the noise, I'm just trying to get as much out as I possibly can. Okay, so I know it looks like a lot but what I'm going to do is I'm going to spread it as much as I can. It might be quite a thick layer because I'm just trying to use this up now. So there might be quite a big chunk of chocolate sauce but what I would generally do trying not to let it hit the edge too much of the plate what I would generally do is flatten it as much as possible so you've got as even a layer as possible so I think that's probably looking pretty good and what I do I wish I had a turntable because I do have to turn my, t my plates on the sides quite a bit so right, I'm just going to see if I can flick some of this up so it doesn't quite go on the plate. So that's probably as good as we're going to get. Um, obviously the base slash top, I've already taken the greaseproof paper off and then I'm just going to lay it on the top. And then hopefully that doesn't look too bad. Um, what you can do if you want to be good for decoration um, is if I can find my little tub of icing sugar I do have a mini sieve somewhere in fact let's see if I can find it because what I like to do for sponges your classic Victoria you would normally have a bit of this on the top so what I'm going to do is without I'm going to do actually, I'm going to grab a spoon, well, that's going to be a better way to do it. Let's get a spoonful of this. And then I'm just going to tap a bit of this on the top. You don't have to put loads, I'm just going to put a little bit of a dusting. That was actually quite a bit not needed. And there we go, there is my sponge cake with chocolate icing instead of regular icing. So I hope you've enjoyed.